All across the world, there are numerous places where planes simply don't fly. Many of these have been officially designated as prohibited airspace for a variety of reasons, such as safety concerns for those on the ground, areas of religious importance, or environmental factors. And sometimes, an area hasn't officially been deemed a no-fly zone, but planes will actively avoid it for their own safety. So today, we're going to explore a number of places where planes don't fly for a wide array of different reasons. Disney Parks Disneyland and Disney World are respectively known as the happiest and the most magical places on Earth. Adults and children alike flock to the two theme parks, with each averaging over 50,000 visitors every day. During peak vacation times, Disney World's daily attendance can even exceed 200,000 people each day. If you're an American, there's a 70 to 90% chance that you visited at least one of these parks at some point in your life. But if you visited at any point in this century, one thing you didn't likely notice while you were at the park was the presence of any airplanes. While flights over the parks aren't entirely banned, there is an area of prohibited airspace directly above the parks. This was put in place as a temporary restriction following the attacks on 9-11, and in 2003, the restriction was made permanent. According to the regulations, any planes are required to remain at least 3,000 feet above the parks. The prohibited airspace extends three kilometers in all directions beyond the park's borders. While this no-fly zone is usually discussed in regards to Disney, and they are the only two theme parks with restricted airspace, the rule is not actually exclusive to the parks. The same rule applies when flying above any stadium in the United States with a seating capacity of 30,000 people or more. This regulation also isn't restricted to just planes either. As with most restricted airspace, it is a blanket ban on any aerial craft, including drones. This actually proved to be problematic for Disney when they were thinking about replacing their nightly fireworks displays above Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty's castles with choreographed light-up drones. Disney had to seek approval from the Federal Aviation Administration in order to fly drones on their own property, a year-long process that finally resulted in them being approved in 2016. Just before we continue with today's video, I do want to talk about something a bit personal, and that is hair loss. Now, as you can see, I've had to embrace the bald look. Keeps can't save my level of hair loss. It was too late for me. If Keeps was around 10 years earlier than it was, I'd have been on it. But look, if you've still got hair and you're beginning to lose it, Keeps can help you out. They're an online subscription service that is changing the game for men dealing with male pattern baldness. Keeps is super convenient, no more awkward trips to the doctor's office or the pharmacy, just get expert care from the comfort of your own home. And the best part, it comes in discreet packaging, no one needs to know about your path to luscious locks. So what's cool is that Keeps tailors a treatment plan just for you. It's like having your own hair guardian angel, and guess what? It's not going to break the bank. Keeps treatments are typically half the cost of traditional pharmacy prices. Affordable and effective, it's a great combo. Keeps offers clinically proven treatments. According to studies, these treatments are 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase hair growth by up to 35%. Plus, they have a fantastic two-in-one gel available. And for those of you wondering, Keeps is trusted by almost a million men. That's a lot of satisfied customers with over 4,500 five-star reviews. So here's the deal. Hair loss stops with Keeps. And I've got a special offer for you. Just go to keeps.com forward slash Simon or click the link in the description below. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Simon, your journey to great hair starts there. There's a link below. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring. And now back to today's video. The approval was good for four years, though the early drone shows were held at a separate part of the park rather than replacing the fireworks. Those early shows were bordering on just being tech demonstrations, but with advance in drone technology, Disney has finally put together an exceptional illuminated drone show above one of their castles. Unfortunately, if you want to see that show, you'll have to either travel to Disneyland Paris or wait for the FAA to give Disney new approval to fly drones. And that brings us to our next no-fly zone, Paris. While there is a fantastic drone show at Disneyland Paris, that's only possible because the park isn't actually located in Paris. It's 32 kilometers away in the suburbs. Similarly, Paris's main international airport is also located in the suburbs. But just like the United States' ban on air travel above crowded theme parks and stadiums, the rooted airspace above Paris only extends to a certain height. In this case, 6,500 feet. In addition to the overall height restriction, there are certain areas of Paris that are prohibited airspace at any height. These include government buildings, military installations, and the Eiffel Tower. For the most part, these regulations were put into place by France as a safety precaution because of all the important government buildings located within the city. And with the Eiffel Tower, it's just because it's a really important landmark. 
Although planes aren't subjected to these sorts of restrictions above most nation's capitals, it's not exactly unusual either. Washington, D.C. has similar rules centered around the Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport. The area, in a 50-mile radius from the airport, is known as the Flight Restricted Zone, where only government planes and certain scheduled commercial flights are allowed, though there is a large section of the city that remains completely prohibited. Extending another 50 miles beyond the Flight Restricted Zone is the Special Flight Rules Area. Though not quite as restrictive as the Inner Zone, Air traffic is still heavily limited in this area. These zones were temporarily created in 2003 and made permanent in 2008, although unlike the rules regarding stadiums and parks, they were not created in the aftermath of 9-11. Instead, these zones were created as a preventative measure leading up to the United States' invasion of Iraq. Other countries have prohibited airspace above their capital cities for security reasons as well, such as Islamabad, Budapest, and Moscow. Machu Picchu for most people, Machu Picchu is the most well-known relic of the Incan civilization. The historic ruins occupy an area of about 325 square kilometers, 125 square miles, atop the Peruvian Andes, situated between the peaks of Machu Picchu and Juana Picchu. Although there are many structures across the large area of land, there are three main ones. This location first became known to Europeans after it was discovered by Spanish soldier Baltazar Acampo in the 16th century while it was still in use. However, while Acampo described the magnificence of the buildings, presuming them to be occupied by Incan nobility, his description was relatively brief. No more Europeans bothered to go back to the site for another 300 years. As a result, the exact purpose of the ruins has remained a mystery. The Incas didn't have a written language, and Acampo was part of the Spanish army that was waging war against the native people, so he couldn't really hang around for a sightseeing tour. And since he's the only European known to have seen the site while it was still in use, all we have to go on regarding the purpose of the various buildings is the findings of archaeologists. But even if Machu Picchu remains shrouded in mystery, it also remains one of the most impressive and historically relevant Incan sites in the world. As such, it would stand to reason that the area was categorized as prohibited airspace in an attempt to protect the ruins. After all, a plane crashing or needing to make an emergency landing would undoubtedly cause a lot of damage to what remains of the Incan ruins. And while that certainly did factor into the decision, it actually isn't the main reason that flights over Machu Picchu were banned. In the 1980s, Peru had authorized helicopter tours of the ruins, a popular attraction. But in 1999, all air travel was banned over the 125 square mile area by Peru's culture ministry in order to protect the fragile ecosystem of the area. There are numerous animal and plant species exclusive to the Andes, and the excessive noise and vibrations from helicopter propellers threaten to disrupt and damage the natural balance. In addition, air traffic over the area would increase pollution, just one more factor that put the indigenous flora and fauna at risk. While the helicopter tour company tried to fight these restrictions, in 2006, Peru's Civil Aviation Authority definitively declared the area a no-fly zone. This act helped protect rare local species like the spectacled bear and the Andean cock of the rock. Of course, sometimes people still disregard the rules. In August of 2023, Peru's president, Alanto Hamala, who had just attended the dedication ceremony for a new school, was piloting a helicopter back from the event. Seemingly forgetting the rules of his own government, he decided to take a detour past Machu Picchu to enjoy the aerial view, with another government official riding alongside him, posting aerial photos of the location to Twitter. Mecca the earliest history of Mecca has remained shrouded in mystery thanks to a lack of definitive early sources. There are plenty of vague references that certainly might be about Mecca, but thus far, it's impossible to know for sure. Regardless, Mecca is the holiest site in Islam, particularly the Masjid al-Haram, or the Great Mosque of Mecca. This is home to the Kaaba, a stone structure believed to have been built by Abraham and Ishmael. Since the early 7th century, Muslims have been praying daily to Mecca, and it currently has a near-absolute ban on flight. Exceptions are exceedingly rare, and are usually reserved for accidents in which pilgrims need to be airlifted to hospital by helicopter. As for why the ban exists, there are two popular theories. Only one of these theories has any basis in reality, but both remain popular anyway. The far less credible theory as to why planes aren't allowed to fly over Mecca is that they physically can't. According to the theory, Mecca is the precise central point between Earth's magnetic poles, and the resulting electromagnetic field makes it physically impossible for anything to fly directly over Mecca, including birds. This theory persists despite countless pictures of birds flying over or perched atop the Great Mosque. 
While not as entertaining, the other explanation of America being prohibited airspace is much more reasonable. Planes are banned simply because of how religiously significant the location is to the Muslim people. The fly ban exists out of respect for the holy and historical landmarks and to protect them from any damage that could result from a plane crash. It's also so that the noise of airplanes flying overhead won't disturb the pilgrims who've come to worship. There's another factor in play as well here, which is that nobody is allowed inside Mecca unless they are Muslim. Tourists are required to provide documents and proof that they are Muslim if they wish to enter Mecca, and this strict Muslims-only policy isn't just limited to the ground. While it would be rather difficult to enforce any non-Muslim passengers on a plane that flew above Mecca and the Kaaba could technically be subjected to fines. Of course, it certainly makes more sense for the Saudi Arabian government to just ban flights entirely rather than try to enforce that policy. North Korea now, this is the most recent of all bans that we've talked about today, and it's not actually instituted by the country where the no-fly zone exists. Instead, other nations have banned their planes from flying over North Korea for their own safety thanks to North Korea's rather erratic behavior. While tensions between North Korea and much of the world have been pretty high for quite some time and various flight restrictions did exist, things really went into full effect starting back in 2014. It was then that North Korea began firing missiles into the Sea of Japan without warning while also jamming navigation and communications networks. This meant a commercial flight could make its way directly into the path of one of these unannounced missile tests and there would be no way to warn them. North Korea's recent missile test came dangerously close to an Air France jet. In August of 2017, North Korea fired an intercontinental ballistic missile several hundred miles into the air, while a commercial jet for Air France was flying directly across the Sea of Japan. When the missile splashed down, it passed through the precise location where the plane had been just 10 minutes earlier. Though Air France and the French government publicly insisted that the plane had not been in any danger, France immediately prohibited all flight over North Korea and the neighboring waters. The United States was able to work out a deal with North Korea where the US would be informed of any upcoming missile tests so that they could continue commercial flights in the area, but this agreement didn't last very long. Within a year or two, North Korea was back to throwing missiles into the air without any warning, so the US and a constantly increasing number of other countries have decided it's better just not to fly anywhere near where these missiles might be. Tibet now, so far, we've only talked about places that planes have been banned from flying because of regulatory bodies. These are also mostly small areas. If you were to look at a map of live air traffic, these locations wouldn't be immediately obvious. At the time of writing, the Tracker Flight Radar 24 shows nearly the entire landmass of the world covered in thousands of airplanes and one sleigh that's currently headed towards Japan at the time of writing. There are only three areas of the world that are currently completely untouched by air traffic. One of those is Antarctica, which shouldn't come as a surprise. Planes can fly there depending on the weather conditions, but they rarely do, as there's almost no reason to. The next is Ukraine, but this lack of air traffic is due to the Russian invasion rather than being typical for the region. However, the third area that is completely devoid of air traffic is Tibet. The entire 2.5 million square kilometer Tibetan plateau does not have a single plane flying over it. This is not because of any regulations put in place by the CCP or the Tibet Autonomous Region's local government, and planes are theoretically welcome to fly there anytime they want to. But they do so at their own peril. Tibet is covered in multiple mountain ranges, including the Himalayas, and the average elevation of the Tibetan Plateau is a little over 14,000 feet. The average cruising altitude of a commercial plane is 33 to 42,000 feet, so at first glance, it seems like this would be totally fine. However, in the event of certain emergency situations, such as cabin depressurization or an engine failing, the first order of business is to lower the plane's altitude. For depressurization in particular, this usually means dropping to an altitude of 10,000 feet or lower. Given the height of the Tibetan Plateau, this is not an option. Another issue is that flying over mountains has the potential for extreme turbulence caused by updrafts, often referred to as mountain waves. This can cause a form of clear air turbulence, so named because it lacks any visual indication for the potential of turbulence, like clouds. While this is often seen as more dangerous because the lack of visual clues means that the pilot wouldn't have the fastened seatbelts light on, in case of Tibet, there wouldn't be any surprise factor as the turbulence is all but guaranteed. But 
Even if it's not a surprise, the severe turbulence would be reason enough to avoid the area whenever possible. While it is extremely rare for turbulence to actually bring down a plane entirely, it isn't fun for anybody involved. Not only that, but severe turbulence can cause expensive damage to a plane. It's usually not anything structurally important, but luggage flying out of overhead bins can damage the interior of the plane. There's also a higher risk of injury to passengers and crew, both from loose items in the cabin being thrown around or from the passengers themselves being thrown around if they aren't buckled up. Though this may be the largest area that planes actively avoid for fear of their own safety rather than because of restrictions from government agencies, it's not the only place. For example, air traffic controllers are immediately updated with any reports of volcanic activity as volcanic ash represents a very serious danger to plane engines. However, despite the widely held belief that planes try to steer clear of the area for their own safety, one place you'll definitely see planes flying on a daily basis is the Bermuda Triangle because it's not a real thing. 